Good morning, everyone, and hope you slept well. Uh, so last night, my project was to get a, a Raspberry Pi smoke sensor working uh, with kind of a, like a little buzzer for an alarm. Uh, my end goal is to be able to have that feed a website or check it remotely. But um, for today, we're just going to go over how to get the sensor working, how to read the data, and have it kick off a little buzzer. Um, so let's get started on what hardware you're going to need. Um, so of course we're going to need a Raspberry Pi, uh, by far the most expensive piece in this project. Uh, we'll need a smoke sensor. Um, I'm using the MQ-3. Uh, pretty much any analog sensor should work. This one also seconds as an alcohol sensor, so maybe another project to make a uh, breathalyzer. Um, an ADS-1115 is the analog to digital converter. Uh, there's no uh, analog pins on the Raspberry Pi, so you have to convert them. So this does four pins. Uh, you can use it for other projects or add other sensors on. Uh, it's really good for a $10 chip. Um, we're also going to need a three volt buzzer to make some noise. Uh, you could potentially replace this with like a speaker out the audio jack or all sorts of other options. But in this one, we're using a three volt buzzer just to make it easy and a breadboard to tie it all together. Um, in this one, there's uh, not a lot of overlap, so if it's just going to be uh, this on your Raspberry Pi, you could do this all with just jumper cables, too. Um, skip the breadboard. So this is how we're going to have everything connected together. So starting from the bottom, uh, we're going to have a ground pin uh, off the Raspberry Pi. Um, you're going to have one ground going to your buzzer. You'll notice that there's a plus on the top of the buzzer to indicate the positive side, so make sure your ground goes to the other end. Um, GPIO 18 is going to go to the plus side of your buzzer. That's what we use to kick the buzzer off. Um, both our MQ3 and our ADC use 5 volts, so we'll have uh, 5 volt from the Raspberry Pi. Uh, pin, I want to say 2 and 4 are both 5 volts, so uh, if you weren't using a breadboard, go ahead and feed those that direction. Um, the uh, SCL pin and SDA pin uh, from your analog converter go down to uh, pin 5 and pin 3 on the Raspberry Pi. Um, the only one I don't have on here is you're going to need a third cable or jumper. Uh, coming off of the MQ3 and going to a analog port on the analog converter. Uh, in this case, we're using port 3, so let me just add this in kind of clumsily here. Uh, so analog 0 will go to the signal port, the S port, on your Raspberry Pi. Uh, sorry, not on your Raspberry Pi, on your ADS-115. So analog 0 to the signal port on the MQ3. So basically, we'll feed the analog signal into the MQ3, uh, and then we will read it off the I2C port on the Raspberry Pi. Um, and then by telling it which port we want to call, we could actually have, you know, like I said, four sensors here. So port 0, 1, 2, and 3. So kind of a simple setup. Uh, works well. So let's, uh, let's get into the actual nuts and bolts of it. Okay, so I'm on my Raspberry Pi. Um, I've made a folder called gas check uh, just to kind of work from. Um, so the first thing we're going to need to do is install some packages to get I2C rolling and then a library to talk to the analog to digital converter. So that's about, uh, depending on what you have on your Python, either three or four commands. Uh, those are down in the description if you just want to copy them in. Um, I should have everything pre-installed, but we'll go ahead and run through them anyways. So the first one is to install the um, Python SMBus module. So um, we also need the I2C2, I2C tools. So that's sudo apt install I2C tools. Um, there's a few options for installing the library for the analog to digital converter. Uh, I like to install pip uh, using Python pip. So um, we'll go ahead and install that as well here. Oops, we're going to cancel this. I'm having some issues with my Bluetooth right now, so that's not going to work uh, due to another, another project. Um, and then Python pip. 
So, oops, is that last process setting canceled out quite yet? And then again, this should be installed, so I'm just kind of going through the process here. Um, obviously, if yours aren't already installed, it's going to take a lot longer to get those, to go through those. Um, the other thing is if you haven't used your I2C interface before, uh, you'll have to enable that in the Raspberry Pi config. So if you, uh, again, the command is raspy-config, I'll have that in the description. Uh, do advanced options and then I2C and just change that to enable and click yes. It'll ask you to reboot and once you're rebooted, you should uh, be good to go. Um, you'll want to verify that though, so uh, once you go through all these steps, um, I2C, uh, detect, dash Y, and for a Raspberry Pi, uh, I think 2 and 3, it'll be 0. For the earlier users, it'll be 1. Um, if I had nothing on my I2C bridge, this would just, they would all just have dashes. I actually, this is our analog to digital converter, and I have a temperature since you're plugged in as well right now, so something for another video. But right now, um, you just want to make sure you have a at least one number here, probably in this address here. So um, once you see that, you'll know you have everything connected correctly and that your um, Raspberry Pi sees the analog to digital converter. So you should have all your prep work in place. Um, I'll have a couple links in the bottom on how to get the I2C uh, configured on the Raspberry Pi. Um, so if you have issues, follow those links, uh, and those will have some additional troubleshooting steps in them as well. Um, so uh, hopefully everything works. So let's uh, get started with our scripting. Um, so I'll go ahead and also include just this script in the description. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just run it directly from Python. Uh, so we'll start by importing uh, time. That will allow us to do sleep. We'll need that for our buzzer. Um, we're also going to be using uh, the GPIO pin to set up the, um, to actually kick off the buzzer. So we'll import GPIO. Um, I'm a network engineer, so sorry if my uh, language is not perfect here uh, for my Python. Definitely not a developer. Um, but <laughs> import our library. Um, so, and let's go ahead and build out our uh, analog to digital converter. So we'll go ahead and I'm going to copy this library name here and just call it that. And you'll notice I use ADS1115. There is like a 1015, so if you have that model, yours is going to look like this. Um, I'll also include a link specific to these analog digital converters just because they're cool and it's good to have the information for other projects. So, so far we've just imported our libraries. Um, I don't know if, I don't think I included the command to install the library. See, I have it in the notepad here, so this is it. Um, and then I'll include that in the description as well. That's for the ADC library. Um, so once we have our ADC, our analog to digital converter, kind of configured, it's really easy to work with it. Um, so uh, we're on pin uh, 1 on mine. So for whatever analog pin you plugged into, uh, you could have 0, you could have 1. Um, but basically we're going to say ADC read the analog to digital converter with a gain. Um, in these, the gain of zero seems to work best, but the gain you, you want to manipulate if you're dealing with analog sensors that, you know, have different variants in the voltage. So, let's print that out. And uh, there's our gas value right there. So, uh, <coughs> this is kind of just to verify that everything's working, but if you've got this far, uh, you're pretty much ready to go. Your sensor's read by the Raspberry Pi, and you have some valid output. Uh, so right now we're showing 2071 uh, for this converter or for this particular sensor. That's about right. Um, I would say when it goes over uh, 4,000 or 5,000 is when I'm going to trigger it uh, after I'm messing with it a little bit. But let's go ahead and get a script in place and uh, 
get it running on an automated fashion so that this thing will start looking for smoke and buzzing when it sees some. Uh, so uh, we'll do nano, uh, call this gas run.py. Um, so I have some of basically what we just typed in for our valid validation already copied here. So let me just paste that in and get us started and we'll go over it real quick. So we're importing time again to control the buzzer. We'll import GPIO. Uh, the GPIO portion is not, necessarily, not necessary to just read the analog um, output. So if you don't have the buzzer, you're just looking to read the output. You don't need any of that. Um, we'll set them into a bridge comm mode and um, yeah, so now we'll just need to get a gas reading. So we'll do gas V again for gas variable or value. Probably make more sense gas value. Uh, I'm on pin one. So if you hooked up to analog pin zero, you'd use zero here. Gain equals zero. Okay, uh, now let's do just a simple if statement. If gas value is over, say, 5,000. Uh, then one, two, three, four. GPIO dot setup eighteen uh, was the GPIO pin we used. GPIO dash out. Uh, one thing about GPIO eighteen is that sp sp <laughs> that specific pin uh, supports power PWM. Um, power. Uh, apparently, forgot to spell. Uh, so. Um, you know, you can, um, you know, control the, the loudness of the buzzer by configuring PWM if you want to do some research. Okay. Uh, I went and paused it and just changed our, uh, our analog pin to zero so that we would match what we had in our drawing as well. Um, okay. So, um, Basically, uh, well, next we'll need to tell it to sleep. So by turning the output on on pin 18, that's going to provide 3.3 volts to our buzzer and make it buzz. Um, so we're going to want it to buzz for a certain amount of time. You could do like 0.5 for half a second or one for a full second. Um, and then we're going to want to clean up the pins when we quit. Uh, if we were going to continue to loop this, we'd probably want to do something more like GPIO output to off, or ch change the 1 to a 0 on that command to set it to off. But um, in this case, we're just going to run it once, so this should be good. Um, so then let's go ahead and print out uh, gas space equals space plus. Um, you could do like the string of gas value. Um, that's not really the best way of doing that, but it should work. Python gas run dot pi. Okay, uh, so um, oops. Change that back to one. I think I have my two sensors mixed up. I sure did. Okay. So uh, if gas value is uh, less than 5,000, we want that greater than 5,000. I don't know if you heard that beep in the background. Let's see, it came in as 2,074. So that looks pretty good. So we can run the command. There's no beeping. Um, so uh, there's a few ways to automate scripts. Uh, I like to use crontab. So we're going to have this run every minute just so it's constantly checking. So the first thing we need to do is give this script permission to run as the pi user. So we'll do chmod plus x gas run dot pi. And uh, now we can do uh, just run it right from the command like a command. Uh, so then we'll do cron tab dash e. Um, so I have a few other ones running here, uh, an old sensor. But basically we're going to say run every minute, every hour, every day of month, of every month of year, of every day of week, and then we'll do slash the, the location of the script I want it, want it to run. And we think we call that one gas check.py. Uh, 